If you've seen some of my other videos, you've seen me use this Greenworks cordless chainsaw in a lot of them. It's had a starring role as I cut down and cut up a lot of trees. And in one of those videos, I promised to do a review of it. And this is that video. I've had this chainsaw for about six months now, and I've cut up a lot of wood with it in that time, so I think I can give it a pretty fair evaluation. I have to admit I was very skeptical of battery-powered chainsaws, but this thing has won me over. After doing a good bit of research online, I settled on this Greenworks 16-inch 40-volt G-Max chainsaw based on price and good reviews. This model came with one 4-amp-hour battery and a charger, but I also bought an extra battery. Some of the features of the saw include a low kickback 16 inch Oregon bar and chain with a 3 8 inch pitch, metal bucking spikes instead of plastic ones like some cheaper saws. It uses the G-Max 40 volt lithium ion system. Full recharge time is 2 hours for the 4 amp hour battery, though I recommend leaving it longer when you can. It has a brushless motor design which provides more torque and less vibration than ordinary DC motors. Let's take a closer look at the saw. One of the things I really like is the no tool chain tensioning system. First, loosen the chain cover lock knob. Then adjust the chain tension knob to get the tension just right. Then tighten the cover lock knob. It seems to hold the chain tension very well. Installing a battery requires a firm push to lock it in, so it's best to have the saw sitting on a solid surface. A single push of the power button turns it on. Hmm, that sounds awfully familiar. Kirk to Enterprise. Enterprise, Spock here. Yep, I thought so. Let's hear what this thing sounds like. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Here's what it really sounds like. As you can hear, it's a fairly quiet saw. The oil cap is located here, and it has a very generous oil reservoir with a level window. I can usually cut all day and not have to refill it. Here are the metal bucking spikes, which are easily replaced, as you'll see in a minute. The electronic chain brake works like most others do, but it's probably just a switch that cuts the power to the saw. Let's take a look under the hood. You have the chain tensioning knob the chain drive sprocket, the oil port, the chain tensioning pin, and here are the screws holding the bucking spikes. Oh, and they even have a diagram showing the proper chain orientation and direction, because that's kind of important to get right. Putting the saw back together is easy enough. Make sure the chain is seated in the bar channel everywhere along the bar. Seat the chain in the drive sprocket. Make sure the chain tensioning pin is in the hole of the bar. Then tighten the chain tensioning knob to the proper tension. Here's a look at it when it is properly put back together. Replace the chain cover and tighten the cover lock knob and you're done. Okay, it's time to take this thing into the field and show you what it can do. I have a fully charged battery and a freshly sharpened chain. It can be hard to push the power button with gloves on, but I've learned that I can slide my thumb over it and turn it on. I'll start by cutting up some of the smaller stuff and then get to the big trunks.
That's enough of the small stuff. Let's tackle some big stuff. The Greenworks literature says it can cut up to 100 cuts with a fully charged 4 amp hour battery. But they don't define what a cut is. Is it 1 inch limbs or 12 inch trunks? I suspect it's somewhere in between. The base of this tree I'm cutting now is about 16 inches in diameter. I move back to the other side for the final cut to be clear of the log when it falls. I'm asking a lot of this saw today as you will see. Boom. Not bad for battery powered. Hard to know if this next one is compressed at the top. Well, it looks like I cut all the way through, but some mysterious force is holding it in place. Looks like I need a different means of persuasion. There we go. Sledgehammer came in handy after all. Now I think that's a lot to ask of an electric chainsaw, a battery powered chainsaw at that. So I think that's pretty good. It did take a toll on it though. We're down to 50%. If you can see those two green bars there, I hope you can. There we are. Did you notice the battery has a label with the number two on it? That's because I like to keep track of which battery I'm using, and I can easily keep track of the performance of each battery. I number all of my cordless tool batteries for this reason. We'll see what more we can get out of it today. This next tree is starting at 16 inches and gets bigger as I work my way down toward the stone. That's another one down. I think it may be all the way through. I believe it is. Not know till we cut the next one. means it's time to change the battery. It takes a really firm press to lock the battery in place, but I think that's for safety reasons. You wouldn't want the battery to pop out if you were up in a tree cutting limbs. Uh-oh, the saw was getting pinched even with the wedge, so I need to use another wedge. Ah! 
There we go. <laughs> Starting to get fun. 100% charge still. That's a good sign. Which time again? And another one bites the dust. All right, got that done with 75% to spare. I'm still very impressed with this little saw. It's punching above its weight class. That is big. Sounds like the saw is getting tired. I know I am. The logs bound up against the previous one I cut. Time to employ the doom stick again. It occurred to me after the fact that I happened to bring a tractor along that could have nudged that log easily. <laughs> Victory at last. On his last legs. Less than 25%. I'm down to my last 5%. I'm going to call that a day. Let's see how big this last piece was. Here's what I like about this saw. It has instant starting. There's no mixing of fuel. It is very quiet. It has a generous bar oil reservoir. There's the no tool chain tensioning, which I really like. It has good battery life and consistent power till the battery is exhausted. And it's solidly built. Now here's what I don't like. It's not as powerful as a gas saw. It's slower cutting than a gas saw. It's hard to turn on with gloves on. The auto off is quicker than I would like it to be. The battery's hard to get in and out, but I think that's for a good reason. So here are my summary and recommendations. I think it's a good saw for the money. It's probably best as a medium duty saw for the homeowner, 
Not necessarily for a professional unless you just wanted to trim limbs up in a tree. It might be a, a good choice for that. Definitely get the 4 amp hour battery and buy at least one extra 4 amp hour battery. Oh, and there's one other consideration to keep in mind. When I was buying this saw, I was also considering the whole family of the G-Max line products because if you're going to invest in a battery powered system, you want to look at what other products you might buy eventually. For instance, I ended up buying the pole saw, the pole hedge trimmer, the string trimmer, and a blower in this family. And I got to say up front that I'm very pleased with all of them. Uh, and in fact, I'll do a review on each one individually, but just so you know in advance, if you're considering a family of products, this is an excellent family of uh, cordless products. If you enjoy these videos, please help me keep them coming by clicking the like button, commenting below, and subscribing. Thanks for watching.